Hey guys, and welcome back. When the Nintendo Switch launched in March of 2017, I was very excited to say the least. As someone who owned a Wii U when a Wii U was a relevant system, I already understood the benefits of being able to play console quality games on a portable, albeit it was only 15 feet away from the console. But there was another small nuance that really had my attention. It was the Switch Pro Controller. Dating back to the Wii U, Nintendo seems to have drawn inspiration for their controller design from Microsoft. The Switch Pro Controller, to me anyway, has a very Xbox 360 feel to it, and that's a very high compliment in my book as I think Microsoft has done a great job with their controller design. One thing that I cannot say Nintendo has done as well as Microsoft is release enough limited editions of the Pro Controller. Other than the couple limited editions, the Xenoverse and Smash Ultimate, they really have not done much to offer anything exciting. So today, let's change that, let's mod this Pro Controller, and let's make it look absolutely awesome. If you're new here, and you enjoy controller or console restorations and mods or other projects, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I post new videos. But for now, first step as always is to rip this thing open. Fortunately with the Pro Controller, it only uses a double zero Phillips head, so ripping it apart is incredibly easy. So with the controller ripped apart, next thing I wanted to look at was a potential replacement shell. I've seen these on Amazon before, and I figured, what the heck, let's give one a try. If you're interested in trying it yourself, I'm going to leave a link in the description, and you can check these things out. They're pretty cool, and they work pretty great. My choice, let's go for the ice blue. The overall packaging on these are pretty simple. It comes with the front plate, back plate, and the buttons. I'm going to choose to pass on using these buttons, but they're there for you in case you want to install them yourself if you happen to pick one of these up. So for the buttons, I decided to keep the original black OEM buttons. Initially I was thinking to myself, hey, we should cast new ones, and, and I actually ended up casting new ones. But the reality was, I, I just like the look of this ice blue and black so much that I decided to keep the OEM buttons. Like I said, casted new ones, just didn't do it for me, so I stuck with the originals. Overall, reassembly is really easy, and the best part is, only uses a Phillips head screwdriver, which makes reassembly very, very easy. I did notice that the third-party shells were just maybe a hair tight, but honestly, went together no problem. So at this point, I sat there and said to myself, well, if we're going to cast new buttons, we should probably cast new handles too. So I went ahead and loaded these up with some plastilina clay and got them set up in these solo cups. And let's pour us some nice silicone molds of these handles. I've been doing a lot of experimentation lately with different kinds of silicone just to see what will yield me the best results. For the kind of, you know, seafoam-ish green looking silicone, that's Moldstar 15 Slow, and I'm going to use actually for the left handle, I'm going to use Moldstar 30. Uh, just to try the two different ones, your, your basic difference between the two is obviously the color, but the Moldstar 30 has a harder shore rating, which just means it's a more firm or hard silicone overall. But for now, let's montage through these pores and get ourselves ready to do some casting.
So as previously mentioned, the theme here is we're going for ice blue and black. So what I've kind of got lined up here is two different resins. We're going to use some of this um, Onyx Black resin from Smooth On. And this is a really nice urethane resin. I really like the feel of urethane. It's, it's kind of crazy, actually. I find the feel of urethane to feel better than the ABS plastic. So net net when it's all said and done, this controller is actually going to feel different than a stock controller. And it's probably going to feel a whole lot better because like I said, urethane, in my opinion, feels better than ABS. To achieve the blue, what I'm going to do is use some of the Smoothcast 325, which is a amber clear resin, and I'm going to mix in some blue mica powder. This is going to give it a really nice kind of almost like pearlescent effect in the blue, which is going to look absolutely fantastic. So let's mix these up and get them poured. So to achieve my two-tone look, I'm just kind of pouring in little bits of each between the blue and the black and kind of mixing them at the very end with my stir stick to achieve kind of a swirl two-tone look. The other thing that's really nice about these urethane resins, it only takes about two hours for it to fully cure. And other than some flashing on this thing, it looks totally awesome. I think I got exactly what I was looking for. So let's clean these up and reassemble and see what we got. Overall, this controller turned out absolutely awesome fan of the blue and black combo so to me it looks absolutely fantastic and the urethane handles look great to me and like I said it has that urethane versus ABS feel the feelings really hard to describe but the thing I can most closely relate it to is the feel of a premium golf ball which again to me I really like if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this video on the little Mac custom controller I made but otherwise guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below I'll catch you for the next one here soon.